feel like something weird happened to me just now. Can't really explain it. Huh. Anyway, we're back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, in the interim time between episodes, I've unlocked some stuff. I played through the game a bunch of times, and I got, uh, I think, all these pictures. And I, who can remember what I had last time and what I don't? I played through a bunch more. I did some of the stuff that I said I needed to do, which was to uh, focus and write poems specifically for Yuri and Natsuki and Sayori, etc. And I got every, mostly everything. I still have to play through just a couple times. These ones here, it's random. You know what I mean? It's random. They don't really tell you. It, it does tell you what to do, and it's to play, and it randomly chooses. So I still got three left, and I'll just have to play a few times and just do it. But... Uh, I got everything. I did some stuff. You get these by, uh, try, hold on. You get, oh, no, no, no. It's down here. You get these by writing a poem for each of the three girls during a different chapter, the first chapter, each chapter, act one chapters did that. So I got these, uh, I unlocked this by listening to Monica a lot. These I already had. I unlocked a bunch of stuff here by playing through. This was like the perfect poem for everybody. Uh, yada yada etc uh and who, again who can remember what i had and last time and what i didn't i know i didn't have this one no yes i did but one of these i didn't have and now i well a bunch of these i didn't have now i do I press the skip button while monica is talking uh, so anyway that's 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 all happening one thing i do notice is that this there's 10 of these here if you count one two three four eight nine ten of these poems here these secrets if you will and if you click on one of them, it says one of 11 special poems. DDLC selects three random special poems to appear when it is started for the first time. There's 10 of them here, so I don't know what that's about. Maybe one of these other things is a secret. Uh, did we have a mail last... Did we have a mail last time? I, I, I feel like we didn't... Issues caused by unprotected memory. <laughs> nice. I don't remember if we read this. All right, yeah, we, we didn't read this. This is weird. Has anyone evaluated the side effects that might be caused by sharing a memory pool between multiple VMs, virtual machines, rather than allocating them separately? I'm looking at some of the files VM1 is generating. I believe VM1 refers to the, the Prime game, like DDLC. Um, and VM2, I think, refers to these side stories. Hard to say. Uh, I'm finding some information that definitely shouldn't be there. I haven't seen any evidence that this is actually affecting the inside of the VM itself, so I don't think it, this is a priority, but it's definitely worth noting. My best guess is that memory being freed from VM2 isn't getting zeroed out, which technically gives VM1 access to it. All the info I have for true, oh well, uh, all the info I have will go into the issue tracker, but I wanted to check if anyone else already noticed something along these lines. All right. So what could that possibly mean? Uh, so VM1 is accessing memory from VM2. Okay, good to know. Uh, assuming that does refer to both the main game, DDLC, and the side stories as separate VMs, um, I'm going to think that that means that some of the stuff from these side stories is going to impact the main game? But I can't imagine what that could mean. Unless you have to finish the side stories, play through the main game again, and things will be different? Could be. I don't see why not. I have been playing a bunch of times the, the main game in the midst of doing these side stories to get more pictures and whatnot. And to unlock some files and whatnot. But I don't know. Also, I've tried desperately to get uh, anything unlocked. To get just anything unlocked. Um, and I haven't been able to. I haven't been able to find any of these things. I, I'm pretty sure I've looked at every single file that uh, exists. This one says 1992, and that's like a real year. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, like all of these, all these uh, files in here, I, 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 I don't know. So uh, we'll we'll keep keep an eye out. Maybe doing this last side story, which by the way we're gonna do right now, self love, uh, will be good for us. Let's do it. Let's just do it. You know what I mean? Let's just do it. And we're in. Let's pause. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. I had to stop and make myself a nice, a nice, a nice spot of tea. A cheeky woo, a cheeky woo cup of tea, isn't it, mate? <laughs> Stupid British people.
I'm just kidding. It's only been one day since Yuri's letter. It's been one day since Yuri's letter was delivered to Natsuki with Monica's help. All right. So uh, we remember in the last episode, uh, there was a thing where Yuri wanted to write a letter to Natsuki. Well, was it a letter, though? I think it was a poem. Uh, we didn't get to read it, but that was my theory anyway. And uh, it seemed to have been delivered uh, to Natsuki with Monica's help. We're going to find out what's in it. We're going to find out what's in the letter. And it's going to be good, I think. Because Yuri chose not to attend the club meeting that day, she and Natsuki haven't faced each other since. Oh, so she must... She hand-delivered it. Is there a bug in here? No, there's not. Uh, all right, so uh, she gave it to her, like, physically. We didn't see that scene happen, but it did happen. Uh, although it's only lunchtime, Yuri finds herself anxiously counting the hours until she will need to face the outcome of her efforts, whether good or bad. And they will be bad. There will be blood. And because of the passing by of students was making her feel even more anxious, that reminds me that we met randos, straight up randos in one of the most recent episodes. What the hell was that all about? Uh, Yuri picked out the most secluded spot she could find to spend her lunch. Uh, here she is. Hey, we're back in the uh, uh, this area. Oh, yeah, because Yuri likes this area. Because it's secluded. Nobody ever comes here. Probably because that construction sign back there. It's got to be part of it. Uh, because the staircase is under maintenance. Oh, well, okay. Maybe I should have re <laughs> read the text before. Soccer tryouts. Bake sale. Music club. Coconut. Oh, concert. Okay. Uh, no student was... No student would have any reason for coming here. It's such a relaxing feeling to have a moment of solitude in the middle of this frantic school day. Ah! Oh my god. It was getting silent. It was all silent and I didn't like it. Ah, eep! What are you doing here? Um, I, I just... Yuri grips her books with enough force to wrinkle the pages beneath the pressure of her thumbs while wow, through the cover. Mm. Well, what are you doing here? Mm. I just came to get a drink from the vending machine. Yeah, I think I'll have generic non-name brand soda. Uh, the other one is out of the drink I like. Yuri notices Natsuki fidgeting with a few coins between her fingers. She nods, avoiding eye contact. Natsuki, also looking away, shuffles over to the vending machine. It's so quiet that every one of her movements seems to reverberate throughout the entire stairwell. After far too long, she finally receives her beverage, which she then fidgets with in place of the coins. It's some kind of iced tea. But instead of leaving right away, Natsuki just stands in place. She glances all around her. It's like way too quiet back here. It's creepy. I mean, that's not what I meant, really. I, I mean, it's totally cool that's your, that it's your thing or whatever. Like, I can see how it suits you. So, n not because I think you are creepy or something. I didn't mean that either. You know, I'm just gonna stop talking. That seems like a good idea. It's okay. Everything is okay. Yuri finds herself attempting some words of comfort after hearing Natsuki stammer herself into dejection. Seemingly in response, Natsuki approaches the base of the staircase and hesitantly sits herself down near Yuri. Aww. You know, Yuri specifically didn't want to do this today, so she didn't come to the club meeting. Natsuki, not respecting boundaries. Well... I can leave if you want. Yuri shakes her head. Natsuki twists the cap off the drink and takes a sip. Ah, delicious. I think I'll have some of my own. It's very hot. Despite receiving Yuri's general permission, Natsuki doesn't say anything more. Yuri continues to read, or at least pretends to. Oh, we're fading out. Oh, are we already getting a CG? No, it's just gonna fade to black. And the two just sit there for a long time. The tension seems to fade a little bit as time passes. <laughs> okay. Even without any words, this seems to mean at least something, though it's not clear what that might may be. All right, cool. Lunch ends more quickly than expected. Natsuki's the first to stand it with her empty drink bottle. Are you coming today to the club? Yuri nods. I'm sorry for being so awkward. I'm really bad at talking about this stuff. I just can't for some reason. I don't know why, but I want to. Eventually. There's no rush. I promise. Thanks. Okay, great. Well, that seems to have resolved itself. What's the next issue? Bring it on. 
It's the next day. Oh, good. All right, it's the next day. Natsuki appears from around the corner and steps up to the vending machine, glancing at Yuri as she does so. Today, she should be holding some kind of book as well. Oh, you're here again? Well. All right. Well, I just came here to read this because there aren't any people around here. Oh, I thought you didn't like how quiet it was. Well, I don't. But there's no people here. I see. Natsuki sits down. The mood feels much different today than it did yesterday. After yesterday's lunch and the club meeting that followed, Natsuki and Yuri are beginning to feel more relaxed around each other. Although Yuri's letter is still lingering in the back of Natsuki's mind, she continues to detour around it. But it's okay that I'm here? Yeah, I don't care. I mostly just don't feel like dealing with the crap that I get from my friends about it. Especially since, like, they all just assumed I stopped reading manga after I joined the literature club. Not that I'm trying to hide it from them exactly, but I just don't want it to come up now after I've waited so long for this new volume to come out. Literally months at this point. Oh? Try reading the Game of Thrones books and tell me how long I have to wait. God damn. It's gonna end, uh, whoop. There we go. It's a little better. You don't have other friends who are into a manga? Not unless online friends count, which they don't. Ha! And Sayori, but that's different because she's not exactly into it. She just likes it. Y'all yeah, know what I mean? <laughs> Honestly, you're lucky that the books you're into at least get get just look like books, so you don't have to feel like everyone is constantly judging you about what you're reading. That would be so awful, especially since I already hate attention so much. Well, it's a good thing I have thick skin, I guess. By the way, I would totally recommend finding some friends online if you haven't already, if you're like me and you have no one to share your hobbies with. Oh, I have online friends. Since middle school, actually. I was especially desperate back then. It's somewhat embarrassing to reminisce about those days. Sometimes I feel like the me from a few years ago would have benefited from a good smack across the face. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, whatever. We were all just stupid kids back then anyway. <laughs> it was 2014. <laughs> it was a different place. <laughs> Some of the fanfics I wrote, thank God I used the pseudonym. But I like, you know, I, I, I said that as a joke. 2014 was a very different time. A very different time. Uh, but I liked it at the time. I got a lot of fulfillment out of it. And plus, I can look back and say with confidence that I've become a better person since then. So I don't think I would change anything. I wonder if a few years from now we'll think the same thing about our current selves. <laughs> Probably. That doesn't make you uncomfortable? No, of course not. I don't care whatever the people think of me. Especially someone who doesn't even exist yet. Hmm. I'll right here. Natsuki raises her hand to her face and forcefully slaps her own cheek. <laughs> That's me from the future coming to terms with me right now. Also, ow, I didn't mean to do it that hard. Yuri doesn't seem to react, but then, to Natsuki's surprise, Yuri shyly looks the other way before lifting her arm and doing the same thing to herself, loudly smacking her cheek. Ow! Why do I have to keep doing this? Why must you have written this into the game and made me do it to myself? She then turns red and stares into her lap, but is unable to hide a smile. As though it was a really funny joke. Ooh, actually, wait. Now that I think about it, this is actually very problematic. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I didn't know you had it in you. I, I don't. I don't even know why I did that. Maybe I thought it would be funny. Sorry, I keep distracting you. You said you were looking forward to reading, but I keep going on about all this nonsense. I'll let you get to your reading. Oh, right. Yeah, the book. Yeah, this isn't a real book. And she just like, it's one of those uh, uh, boxes that's in the shape of a book. I just brought it as a prop. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll do that then. The conversation ends quickly and Natsuki opens her book. It's got a hollowed out flat. It's got a flask inside it. <laughs> she takes a huge swig. Uh, the two read silently for the remainder of the lunch hour, but the whole time, Yuri feels distracted by a twist of regret over having so abruptly forced the end of their conversation. Can you not just be people? Just relax. You don't need to overthink everything. You're back. Yeah, I'm here to lay low again. Another day has passed. During lunchtime, Natsuki finds herself having wandered to the stairwell once more. Whoops. Hey, did you buy that? Natsuki quickly notices a bottle of iced tea on the staircase where she normally sits. Aww. How sweet. Yuri nods, avoiding eye contact. Have we not already read this? What, like, for me? But you didn't know I was coming here today. What if I didn't show up? It was so presumptuous of you, Yuri. Well, I just 
I mean, I would have drank it myself, I guess. It was a stupid thing to do. No, it it wasn't stupid. I just thought, never mind. What I mean to say is thank you. <laughs> and that's a really nice gesture. It, it's okay if you don't feel that way. I do! Shut up about it! <laughs> it was the other things I didn't mean while well, I peeked. Uh, I... So I, I had to change, I had to do some computer work, had to reset some stuff, and it resulted in all of my recording nonsense being uh, way different now. And I have to reconfirm everything to the way it was, which I have not yet done. So there's gonna be some weird glitches, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with all that, we're fine. Hmm. I can't change while I'm recording, and I don't want to stop now, so let's keep trucking along. It was the other things I didn't mean. I swear, please believe me. Mm. I believe ya, but my Tommy gun don't. <laughs> Home alone. Yuri pauses, then nods, avoiding eye contact? Probably. Talking is hard. I get it wrong a lot, too, so I believe you. Natsuki exhales in relief. That was a close one. She then sits down next to Yuri and takes the drink. Knowing Yuri, she was probably overthinking it so much that Natsuki's tepid response filled her with spells doubt. I'll do something nice for you next time. Please don't feel obligated. I want to. I want to do nice things too. Okay, thank you. I can, you can thank me after I figure out how to do something nice. I'll do it then too. Natsuki sighs. Hmm, nothing. It just reminds me how I haven't been getting along with my friends lately. Is that why you've been coming here? Well, no, not exactly. I haven't been avoiding them on purpose or anything. There were just other things I'd rather be doing during lunch today. I like being around them when we're all just having fun, but they also just can't take anything seriously. So I don't know. I'm feeling serious, then their attitudes just get really on my nerves. It's only gotten worse ever since I joined the literature club. It's almost as if someone involved in the literature club is tampering with everyone's character foils. It's like that. How come? I don't know. I feel like I used to be really good with just putting up with it because it would be so stupid to cause drama over a joke I didn't like or something. But I just have a hard time doing that lately. It's my fault for being overly sensitive. If I have a problem, I'm not gonna demand for everyone around me to change. But, yeah, I know. Monica and Sayori really don't agree with that kind of thing, but they're not in that position, so it's easy for them to say that you should just communicate your feelings, or whatever. It's not like a my friend group does that kind of thing. I would just be making an embarrassment of myself. Sorry, none of this has anything to do with you. I don't know why I'm talking about it. It's okay. I like listening. What? Listen to other people's problems? What a freak, Yuri. Yes. <laughs> That's weird. Sorry. I just, I like learning about people. Do you think it's weird? No, it's not weird. I probably just misunderstood, so... I don't know, does that mean I should keep going? If you'd like. Okay. Well, I don't know what to talk about now. What are some things you like about your friends? A lot of things. I mean, they're really fun to hang out with, like after school and on the weekends. And they really like my baking. And it's fun to complain about school together. <laughs> and this girl that I know named your oops. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have mentioned that one. And they make me laugh a lot. We have a good memories and inside jokes. Oh, I'm bad at a lot of those things. So, are all those things that are important to you? Well, kind of, but they're not the things I need to get out of everybody. Everyone in the club is really different from that, but I'm still friends with them too. Well, Sayori really likes your baking. I don't. And she makes you laugh, and she complains a lot. That doesn't mean she's anything like my other friends. Well, unlike them, she's a nice person who cares about your feelings. Excuse me? How about you don't talk about my friends like you don't know anything about? Bam! Jesus, Natsuki. Natsuki stands up. No, wait, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't want to say something bad. Please don't leave. Natsuki sighs and shakes her head. It's fine. As long as you don't understand that you just can't judge people like that. I'm sorry. Natsuki sits back down. You can't just compare friends like that and like measure who's better than who. Everyone's different. I'm sorry, I just, I just don't like people who want to hurt you. A moan of silence stretches between them. I wasn't really very silent, but you get the idea. Ah, so silent that the music has changed. They don't want to hurt me. We just like to tease each other about other stupid things. It's fun. I don't like that. 
Well, that's why I'm friends with them and you're not. You like it? Just don't worry so much about me. It's not worth it. I'm sorry. I wish I knew how to help with social conflicts. Like how Monica can. She's good at these things. She's good at everything. Not really. Also, I don't always want help. Sometimes it's just stuff I have to deal with myself. That's what Monica and Sayori never seem to understand. Just like parents. Parents just don't understand. Sometimes all you do is look at them wrong and they're all like, Aw, what's wrong? Is everything okay? I just want to mind my own business sometimes and decide myself if I want to talk about things. The only one who understands that is you. So you really shouldn't be so hard on yourself. You're not... You're not as bad as you think. Oh, you don't need to reassure me or anything. I mean that. Plus, it makes sense that someone who doesn't talk a lot would make a good listener. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you're also nice, I guess. Uh, weird, I, I hate when it does that because it, it gives the dots, the dot, dot, dots that to me is like, you just are waiting. It's like silence, they're not saying anything. And then you have the blank box. That's like, they're not saying anything. And so my mind is all like, why and how and who? It's really hard for me. It doesn't come naturally at all. It's so weird because I always thought of myself as someone who could just say whatever's in my mind. But I feel like that only works when I'm annoyed or upset or I want to say something mean. Why am I like that? You don't have to answer that. I'm just talking to myself. Yuri nods and remains silent. Natsuki notices her fidgeting with the pages of her book. How come you like reading so much? All right, <laughs> this is a question for somebody in the literature club at this time. Okay, Natsuki. Oh, um, well, a lot of reasons, but I just get sucked into it so easily. Shut up. Help, I'm trapped in this book. Uh, it's so immersive. Like I wanna be a part of it. I, I, I think there are a lot of things about people in real life that make me feel uncomfortable and frustrated. Especially when it comes to following social conventions and group interactions. And when people complain about their friends and their names are Natsuki. I hate that. I just don't really understand it. And I have no real desire to participate. But it's different with books. It feels like I always want to be around the characters. I feel such a strong emotional connection with them in ways that I've never felt with real people. So in that way, I can sometimes feel more real than real life. Really? It's that hard for you to be around people, like, all the time? Mm, fairly often, especially in group settings. When people are making all kinds of conversation and saying jokes and all of that, I don't know what to do, and I just disengage. Oh, that doesn't get lonely. I don't think so. I can still enjoy spending time with people one-on-one. -on -one. And I have online friends too, of course. I'm thinking about them right now. Do you ever do you ever wish that you could just be friends with the characters in the books? Like there's this game that I played once and what you were friends with one of the characters, well, not friends so much as they were stalking you and trying to kill everyone around you so that you would be the only one there and they deleted everyone's character files. It was a whole thing. All the time, sometimes so badly that it makes my heart ache. Yeah, me too. Really? Mm. A lot. Mm. I'm just gonna go in here. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> like, more than anything. After Natsuki mutters that, silence fills the stairwell once more. But it's a mutual silence. You know what I mean? <laughs> One full of understanding. Okay. Well, that. Hey, we're done! Hey, look at that. We're done! We are done. That's weird. Kind of feel like there should have been more to that one. I don't know. Uh, I tell you what, why don't we check out this mail? We have one for, oh, look at this. We're almost at the end. We have 12, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Uh, binary data in VM2. We're going to read it in the next episode. That's what we're going to do. We're going to chop the episode in half. And we're going to do this one on the next one. How much to say about that? That's all I'm going to do, yeah? Good. All right, see you then, everybody. Until then, I've been Mr. Red. This has been Phil. Nice to see you. <laughs> I hope to see you again. Uh, two days from now will be the last episode of this. Well, maybe. What I want to do is do the next, the last side story and then see about looking through some of this stuff because there's a lot of secrets here. I can feel it and I got to find them. So maybe we'll do that in the next one. Maybe it'll be two from now. There's no way of knowing. 
I mean, if you're listening in the future and this is already out, then you can just look at the episodes and be like, okay, that's that's what's happening. But I guess you can't really do that if you're watching live or if you're me recording it. Really, you know more than I do at this point. So you should feel honored and I'm a fool. Anyway, bye. Bye.